Hi, welcome to another Phil Ball Photography Tutorial. Uh, this one is about uh, removing or reducing the appearance of purple fringing in a photograph. Uh, I have this photo here that I borrowed from the DP Digital Photography Review um, website and I'm going to provide a link to that in the description. But uh, in any case you might find, um, and it is sort of camera lens uh, camera and lens specific, um, it gets worse on some, uh, but you might find yourself in a situation where you have this purple fringing in a photo and you really want to get rid of it. Uh, so I thought I'd, I'd put this out there. So uh, zooming in on it here for a moment, here's your purple fringing, looks ugly. Um, the, the blunt tool, the sort of cheap and dirty, quick and dirty um, method is in adjustments, hue and saturation. Um, by itself you might have used this before to change the saturation of an image but what you can do is select the magenta um, color colors only to work on and um, now the quickest method would just be okay turn the saturation down on magenta ch uh, on the magenta channels um, in some cases this isn't going to quite catch all of the the fringing that you want um, it would it would do a reasonable job um, and you, that would be the quickest way of doing it um, there's a couple of tools though that I wanted to show um, when you when you select um, instead of master when you select a color range it gives you the eyedropper tool and when you um, select the eyedropper tool it centers the range that you're working on and, and I want you to pay attention to this little bar down here because this is how you can actually select the range that you're wanting to actually apply the adjustments to now uh, the gray area in the middle applies the adjustment to that top bar any colors in that range are going to get the adjustments completely. The little arrows is kind of a faded, um, graduated reduction of, of the adjustment until you're outside the arrows, in which case none of those colors get any adjustment at all. Okay, and this applies to lightness, hue, and saturation. So you can change purples to reds if you want to, and then there won't be any purple in the image, but there'll be more red. You can do all of that kind of thing. Um, but in any case, that's what these little boxes are for. And we've got it centered around. I don't need much of this fading because it's a very sort of narrow um, color selection that we're making. It's just purples and we don't want it to start affecting reds and blues and things like that. Let me center it with the eyedropper and then apply the saturation um, and then I can even tweak this out just a little bit more and get a little bit more of that um, reddish in there and um, and that would be good, right? So. Now there's a there's a downside to all of this, and you're probably already thinking about it right now. So I'm going to cancel that before we go any further. I want to zoom out and go back to the whole image. What if you say there's somebody wearing purple in my image, or some other purple object in the image that I want want to maintain? So what I should really do is duplicate my layer. Um, you can do that by just dragging the layer down into this little um, uh, page icon down here and then just make my um, desaturation adjustments to the top layer. You could also just make selections, do some other things like that, but um, doing it to the top layer and masking is, is easy. Uh, so then you go back to image adjustments, hue and saturation, let's go to the magenta channel. And give it something like what we had before turn off the purple fringing, great. Um, now, if I was to go a little bit too broad with that um, selection, I might start running into the reds, for example. And you can see it in this lady's shirt, or at least you will when I zoom in on it. So I'm going to go ahead and do that just, just for the sake of education. And, um, and we'll see that I have inadvertently affected her red shirt here. Um, now you could um, sort of have a good careful look at your subject and, and make sure that you haven't affected anything there. In this case it looks like I'm pretty good. I may be just barely starting to grey out some of his shirt but you may not care if it's um, just a small amount. Then what you would do is hit the layer mask and, um, and you'd paint some of that black in the layer mask like that. Um, so her purple pants and shirt show through again, and um, and and his his shirt's now unaffected. So if there were other areas that were affected, 
you could allow this through. Now what it's going to do is it's going to allow any of the purple fringing back in here. And that's one of the benefits of using a mask instead of just um, erasing the portion is I can hit the X key that flips my masking colors and I can paint out the purple fringing again that I don't want, um, which is like basically bringing my top layer that's been desaturated back into, into play. So um, there we go. That was um, how to remove purple fringing and then also how to fiddle with a mask so that you can um, get the image back the way you want it in certain areas. So hopefully that's been helpful. And, um, and subscribe or, uh, or hang around for some more videos. Thanks.